I want to be a little bit personal this week in talking about my yoga practice and what I've learned in the over 25 years I've been practicing postural hatha yoga, qigong and tai chi, meditation and my teacher training and things that I would have liked to have known right at the beginning of my physical yoga practice. I'm going to be quite personal this week because from first impressions when you look at my yoga poses they are not that impressive they are not going to get thousands or hundreds even of likes if I did a yoga pose on any social media today and when I look at what yogis are presented with in terms of what is good and what is bad and what is even safe it drives me a little bit crazy it worries me and so I want to have a talk about why I abandoned alignment cues and um, assists and telling yogis how poses should be done let me show you a very obvious example a practical example of this so when you go to a uh, hatha practice and you're practicing things like Surya Namaskar, sun salutations and you fold forward and maybe after a while you touch your toes there's a cue which goes inhale flat back or flatten your back and you can see that I cannot do this and at its most extreme and its most intense in a 300 hour training uh, now over a decade ago. I remember spending several hours, in fact, a lot of a, a day looking at how to get a flat back in a forward fold pose like Uttanasana or standing forward fold. And I realized that I couldn't do it. No matter how hard I tried, I'd already been practicing for way over a decade by then. But there were people in the class who could do it and they were getting told they were good, they were getting told uh, that they would be good at demonstrations and I would be told as a teacher I, sh I would, wasn't demonstrating the pose well. This is an example of uh, just one pose that I could never do well and in that style that I'd been there were people who started at the same time as me and who were now on stage demonstrating with their teacher. They were running their own classes very well and they were being going up in the school that I had. They even had uh, levels of practice. And I never progressed be 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 belong really into a uh, kind of upper uh, beginner or intermediate level. And this confused me. And as I studied and studied and studied, eventually I found out that there are two reasons why you cannot do a pose, not only one. I'd been presented up to that stage and most yogis still are presented this, that if you cannot do a pose it's because you're tight somewhere in the body. For example, my hamstrings in the backs of my legs are tight and that's why I cannot fold forward, that's why um, I cannot flatten my back. But as I studied and as I practiced and I kept learning, I kept going to teacher trainings all through. Uh, I still go to teacher trainings uh, in my practice. I love learning. I'm a nerd. I found that actually there are two reasons, not one, why you can't do a pose. And the second reason is the shape of your bones. So when I fold forward in this example, for me, when I fold forward, my hamstrings are as long as they're ever going to be the muscles in the backs of my legs but the bone in front of my body the femur bone here hits the pelvis bone my femur bone hits my pelvis my bones are unique to me all of our bones are unique to anybody this is why we have different sizes this is why we have different shapes this is why some of our arms are relatively long where others are relatively short. This is why some people can have long or short legs, even if they're the same height as the people around them. We are all very different. 
And when I learned this, not only my forward fold was different to other people, some people seem to get flat back after having done almost no yoga, whereas I will never have that, that look in a yoga pose. I immediately joined the dots to, well, if that's the case, at least I'm not gonna be able to look that way. I'm not gonna be able to get a flat back in this example. But not only that, I realized that I am pushing a bone against another bone when I try to do that movement. So not only that alignment is, doesn't work for me, I will never be able to get that aesthetic look, but even more concerning, if I tr continue to keep doing that, continue to keep pushing my body to trying to get that look, I would eventually be pushing my bones together and that would be bad, it would be concerning, it would be even injurious. And so I then began to explore other poses and realized that there were many cues and sometimes teachers were assisting me, like in this example, pushing down on my back or getting me to engage muscles even more so that I could flatten my back. But it's not about flattening my back. I felt really wonderful in my yoga. And so I began to realize also that there's no way that a yoga pose should look. It's much more important how a yoga pose should feel in your own body. And as I began to uh, figure this out in my own body, I began teaching it to students. And I realized that many students were also, like me, unable uh, to do things that yoga teachers ask them to do. I also realized that if I pushed on them or touched them or what we call in yoga assisting, I actually made them feel worse, I hurt them. This is very common, there are videos all over and every now and again, at least a couple of times a year, there's a scandal in yoga about a teacher who assisted a student and injured them. So, as you become aware, and as I became aware, that I couldn't be assisted into poses. This is also my experience. I often got, uh, felt bad in poses in my hips or in my shoulders or particularly in my back when a teacher touched me and tried to get me to do a pose more. I realized that eventually I had to let go of a lot of yoga poses. I had to let go of assist and I had to let go of cues that didn't work for me. The more and more I practiced and the more and more I tried to do poses in specific ways, I actually felt bad. There's one time eventually where I actually had to stop practicing warrior poses. Those very simple, you know, standing poses like these ones. I had to actually eventually stop them because if I did, I just got grinding sensations in my hips. And so I stopped practicing like that and I stopped giving cues to students and asking them to place their hands and feet in certain ways because I, I couldn't practice like that anymore. And the more I practiced like this and the more I taught like this, I thought I would become a very unpopular and kind of nobody yoga teacher. But actually what I found is more and more people began, began to come out of the woodwork and tell me, yeah, you know, I can't do that, it hurts my shoulder. Or when my teacher tries to assist me to do that, that hurts my back. Or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I no longer teach. In fact, I cannot tell you there's a right or wrong way to do a pose. And I've now taught way over a thousand, I think it's 300 and something students and, and counting. So for you, if you're new in yoga or if you've been uh, a long time practitioner, I want you to know that if you cannot do a pose, it's not because you're not a good yogi, you're not practicing well. It's not because you're not good at uh, alignment. I think it's important to say also that we're often told that alignment is healthy, it's good. And if you can't do it, then there's something wrong, probably muscularly, a weakness or a tightness in your body. But if it's 
Tightness is not the only reason that you can do a pose. If the shape of your bones, and as I said, this is a massive subject, we're all unique, and this is what I uh, train people in my teacher training programs to see what these are, then the whole model breaks down. If we're sh uh, each of our bone shapes are different, then there is no right way from outside that you can tell that a student is doing activating a muscle or do, doing a pose in a right or wrong way. And this is wonderful because it allows it allowed me to slowly over time jettison all of the uh, kind of visual expectations that I had of doing a yoga pose and a yoga practice. But I had to let go of lots of my teachers and styles and friends who, who all were doing those poses, all those styles and got great things out of assists and great things out of the styles that they were teaching with a lot of alignment. I had to jettison all of that and just go into my practice. As I've taught this now for more than a, a decade, I found that it's not only me who was in uh, this state of affairs, who was not able to follow cues and enjoy assists. And it's actually thousands and thousands and thousands, actually millions of people who are practicing yoga. There are actually very few people who can, who can do uh, so many poses because their bodies are actually just lucky. So now my practice is much more personal. My practice doesn't look, still doesn't look amazing, but it feels wonderful. I'm now into my early 50s and my body feels really great and my mind too. So I want to say that if uh, you are practicing yoga and there are a lot of poses that you can't figure out or if you don't like being assisted, it's not your problem. If you don't seem to be able to do poses that people ask you to do, it's not your problem. It's actually more likely it's the yoga teacher's lack of awareness that there are multiple ways of doing poses. If I'd had this information really, really early on in my yoga career, I could have saved a lot of time. And that's why I'm having this little personal chat with you. My yoga poses are still not fantastic from an exterior, but from me inside, they feel wonderful. And that's where I'd like every yogi to be. The practice should be making you feel great physically, emotionally, and mentally, not just looking at whether you can do poses well. I hope this little chat is inspiring. I look forward to seeing you around again. Take care.